system. And I think we were supposed to start with the microbial techniques. Yeah. Uh, you okay. asked me to read that. Last time we did this lag phase, log phase, testary phase, yes. and all that. Yeah, we did it. So I think we were supposed to start with this one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So these are the microbial techniques. We have to see that. Growing pure. It's all easy. It's a just literature form. It's nothing is uh, cell count, micrometer, optical method, area and mass of fungi. Invading the body. Fine. So let's just start with the technique one by one. Right. So in total, it has been given over here that uh, we have to study about the uh, techniques which are used in microbiology. And here are the techniques where they are counting the cell number of the cell, how to grow the colony, means how to work with the bacteria. That is that is the only thing which has been given over here, right? So let's just start by one by one. I'll keep on explaining each and everything. And uh, if you want me to dictate anything, then I'll do that. So most of the microorganisms are small. They are impossible to see. With the naked eye we have already discussed that if anything that is this smaller than 10 to power minus 4 meter then it we won't be able to see that to investigate microorganism for example to diagnose the disease a disease or a, for scientific experiment you need to culture them culture means we have to grow them right this involved the growing large number of the microorganism so that they can be measured in some way because bacteria are very small. So we have to uh, grow them in large numbers so that we can at least we can see them with the help of microscope or some other uh, scopes. So they need to be provided with the right amount of nutrient and oxygen and also the ideal pH and temperature. It's very important. Bacteria grow on ideal pH and temperature. One more thing for sake of example, suppose that uh, you are making the curd. After a certain limit, what will happen? So what bacteria are doing, the card making bacteria, lactobacillus, what they are doing? They are actually taking the lactose sugar and they are converting into acid, right? So if the pH value will decrease, then after a certain limit, the bacteria will start dying. So pH and temperature is very important. You cannot uh, make the curd uh, uh, while, while putting the, uh, uh, while putting the, uh, that, uh, Mm, uh, milk product in a uh, freeze refrigerator because the re temperature of refrigerator is that much low where the bacterial activity stops right so they require what exactly they require proper nutrient oxygen and also the ideal ph and temperature to grow this point you need to note down it's very important bacteria and fungi are the most commonly cultured organism yes we do use the bacteria and fungi how for sake of example, I just told you, uh, we are making vinegar, we require the bacteria. We are making the curd, we require the bacteria. If we are making the dough, we require the fungi, that the yeast. So bacteria and fungi are the two most important things which are required for making different, different food product uh, for human being. When you grow a pure strain of microorganism, the entry of other microorganism from the air or your skin into the culture will contaminate. So that will contaminate. Why? There may be different bacteria or different uh, harmful bacteria in our skin. There may be different bacteria in uh, air. So they may go and they may kill those bacteria or they may contaminate. They may get, get mixed with that bacteria. So that can contaminate. It is important to take care of when culturing the microbes. It is important. Right? What are the precautions? You may get the question. What are the precautions? 
require to culture a bacteria or what kind of the conditions are required for culturing a making a pure culture right then you have to write it down that ph temperature and nutrient and suitable environment and then the things which we have to take care of it even the microorganism you are planning to culture is completely harmless there is always the risk of mutant strain developing that may be pathogenic so even in within the pure culture some mutant the, the mutant species may develop and that may contaminate or that may uh, that may be harmful as well there is a risk of contamination of culture by pathogenic microorganism from environment yes they can grow from so there are two sources which can contaminate our pure culture what is the first source that is a mutant strain developed within the pure culture first thing second some bacteria can invade from our body or from air the health and safety precautions must always be followed by carefully when handling culturing or disposing the disposing of microorganism all of the equipment must be sterile before you start a culture it is particularly important that the culture you have grown does not leave the lab you should dispose all the culture safely by sealing them placing them in bag and sterilizing them at 121 degree centigrade or for 50 minutes under the high pressure under the high pressure before throwing them away why why it is important to sterilize or dispose them afaf so that nobody else can catch the disease right 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 they may become harmful for and even they may work like like you must have uh, listened the story behind the uh, the story which is the running a story behind the this uh, coronavirus yes mm, yes and uh, the same thing with the hiv it is also said that uh, hiv was not in humans and uh, that was there was an experiment which was going on in united state lab this is the thing which i have listened and uh, and uh, the scientist tells that the hiv has came from two pla uh, two places either it's from the south america means brazil or it's from the african part where the uh, outbreak ha have been take uh, out outbreak outbreak taken place uh, uh, from these two out of any of these two labs and uh, because of the experiment uh, it was uh, there was a medicine which was uh, being uh, tested in the rhesus monkey so uh, that's how they correlate with hiv so they come out of uh, different diseases and they become the pandemic for human as well so uh, culture means to grow or microorganisms right right culture means to grow micro any micro okay and culture medium means the base which we require right and the culture medium is the base exactly so normally what happens that uh, they take agar scientists agar and the agar is the base so they make a base of agar and uh, suppose that i want to grow e coli so i will take a base a layer of agar before uh, dropping e, e, e coli and the nutrient medium the best is that is the coconut milk that is considered the best nutrient to grow the bacteria even fresh sugar is very uh, highly uh, nutrient for them okay so you have to take care of you have to note it down that uh, sterilize them at 121 degree centigrade for 15 minute under the high pressure before throwing them away there are no ethical issues associated with the culturing of micro from perspective of microorganism themselves however you you should always consider the danger of infecting other people with the pathogen by accident so got it what are the requirement for the making a pure culture okay so pure culture is just microorganisms right yes pure culture is just growing the microorganism or increasing a population of micro right you are okay, making this so colony of it requires uh, ideal temperature ph oxygen and nutrients culture right. medium and nutrient medium right 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 and then we have to uh, prevent the contamination right aseptic culture technique culturing microorganism involves the number of the steps first you need to decide which microorganism you want to culture 
and obtain a culture from them. Then you need to provide the microorganism with the right nutrient in order to grow because different microorganisms require different nutrient material. Most of microorganisms require the good source of carbon, nitrogen, as well as the specific mineral. You can use the nutrient medium. Uh, you can use the nutrient medium in the form of nutrient broth. Broth that is non-vegetable soup, right? Non-veg soup. That is broth, right? Nutrient broth, where the nutrient are liquid from the liquid. Uh, where where the nutrient are in the liquid form for the liquid culture right in flask or test tubes or in solid form usually nutrient agar right so nutrient may be either in liquid culture or it may be solid form in the form of agar agar is a jelly extracted from seaweed right that we have already discussed it is very useful because although this solidifies jelly at 50 degrees centigrade it does not melt again until it is heated up to 90 degrees centigrade both solid and liquid media must be kept sterile until they are ready for use you learn the basic principle of culturing bacteria in aseptic conditions agar plates in section 4a right so got it what we what else we require the nutrient may be liquid or uh, or in solid form. If it is liquid, it may be a broth, animal broth, right? Nutrient broth. Or if it is uh, solid, it may be in agar form. Agar we get this from seaweed. Some microorganisms will grow on pure agar, but most need the added nutrient. The majority of microorganisms grow on, grow on, or in a medium enriched with the good protein sources such as blood, yeast extract, or meat extract. Some need a very precise balanced nutrient by producing uh, by producing a nutrient medium with very specific integrate, you provide a selective medium. A medium or in which the only selected group of microorganisms with those particular requirements will grow. Selective media are important identifying the particular mutual strains of microorganism and antibiotic resistance. For example, YM media have the low pH. So there is a media, YM media that have the low pH, which encourages the growth of fungi and molds, but discourages the growth of the bacteria. That thing you have to remember, right? That thing, these are the things which keep on underlining on your textbook that you need to remember, right? Uh, while the MAC uh, conky agar is designed to grow the gram negative bacteria. Clear? Selective media are also useful for identifying the microorganisms that have genetically modified. When scientists genetically modified a microorganism, or and so will you study what are the gen GMO? Do you have any idea about the GMO, GMA? No. No. So, uh, so uh, for uh, for sake of uh, right now, I am telling you, I am giving you a brief idea about what are the GMO. And uh, when we will start with the biotechnology, so in biotechnology, we'll detail, we'll study this thing only that what are the GMA, GMO. So GMO are genetically modified organisms, right? Suppose that you have a bacteria. You have taken out the bacterial DNA. And in bacterial DNA, you have cut a certain part of the gene and you have incorporated a some part of human being, right? Right, that's what we do. Like for say insulin production, what we did, we have taken the insulin production gene from the humans and we have incorporated that gene in bacterial genome. And now that bacteria which have the human genome that will be genetically modified because we have modified the genetical constitution of that bacteria. Now that bacteria is producing insulin. That is the human product that is produced by bacteria. So those kind of the bacteria will be called genetically modified bacteria. And we can call them GMO, genetically modified organism. The same thing we do with the plant, the same thing we do with the animals. So this is the GM. Got it? A rough idea? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so.
right so <laughs> come to the next point practical skill should we study this one as well practical skill yes okay fine uh the media used for the liquid culture is often called broth that we have already understood uh once you have prepared a suitable liquid medium uh, for your culture the next step is introducing your microorganism for example bacteria introducing the bacteria into broth is called inoculation underline that term inoculation right many microorganism are done with the inoculating loop removing the bacteria from the solid medium surface such as agar plate or um, or emerging uh, inoculating loop into known liquid culture you can use the inocul inoculating both broth which involves the making of suspension of bacteria to be grown and mixing known volume with the sterile nutrient broth in the flask so look this is the process of inoculating bacteria it sterilized then taken the bacteria and inoculated the bacteria right once you have inoculated the broth you must put the sterile cotton that's what is done over here cotton wool stop back in the flask again and quickly as possible as to prevent contamination from air so immediately after inoculation we have to put that to prevent them from contamination incubate your flask to a suitable temperature never higher than 20 degrees centigrade as a school laboratory this helps you to make sure that no microorganism uh, which cause the human uh, disease grow they grow the best at human body temperature after the 36 to 37 degrees centigrade you must be aware with the human body temperature Yes. Okay. And Fahrenheit? What is the Fahrenheit? One hundred nine, I guess. I'm oh. not sure. The person will die. One hundred nine. One hundred nine fever is too much. Oh, we measure the fever in Fahrenheit. Actually, this is the ninety-six point five Fahrenheit, right? That is the ideal, and that is 96. equal to thirty-seven degrees. Yeah, thirty-seven degrees. Either you say that our body temperature is thirty-seven degrees centigrade, or the Ninety, ninety-six point five Fahrenheit. Right. So it is important. So after the one zero eight Fahrenheit, the person is in danger. That's why you will see that uh, those uh, fever measuring the uh, equipment or fever fever measuring the thermometer, they do not have a digit after the one zero eight because that is the then the person is out of danger. So okay. in the danger, not out of danger, within in the danger. So never higher than twenty degrees centigrade laboratory. This help you to make no microorganism which causes the human disease grow. They grow best in human body. If you keep the temperature twenty degrees centigrade, those bacteria which is which infect the human, they will not grow. Why? Because those bacteria which infect the human, they require the human body temperature. so it is important to keep them cool shake your flask gently and regularly to make sure that the broth is aerated flowing oxygen reaches the growing bacteria so that the bacteria get the oxygen and if they will get the oxygen they will grow more and more growing a pure culture now how we have to grow a pure culture what are the condition what are the things required we have already understood if you want a uh, pure culture just single type of bacterium or fungus you must isolate desired microorganism the most common way to isolate an organism is to use the information either about its specific need or about its requirement of possible contaminating organism means which are the we we must know which are the uh, microorganism which can contaminate e coli or which can contaminate the yeast culture growing a culture under anaerobic condition will ensure that only anaerobic bacteria will survive right suppose that we want to grow the methane bacteria then we have to provide the <coughs> anaerobic culture then it ensure that no aerobic bacteria will grow over there because oxygen will not be present over there 
Similarly, going organism with the oxygen means the only aerobic bacteria can survive. Anaerobic will not survive. However, some bacteria will grow under both of the conditions. What we call them? Those bacteria which live in aerobic or, or as well as anaerobic condition. I have told you. If I am vegetative, very good, excellent. Good, good. So there will be facultative bacteria. Either there will be facultative aerobic, aerobic bacteria. So facultative aerobic bacteria, generally they are aerobic bacteria, but they can live also in anaerobic medium. If, we, if I say they are the facultative anaerobic bacteria, means they are basically anaerobic bacteria, but they can survive in aerobic environment as well. Okay. So, the nutrient requirement of the different microorganisms vary, uh, vary greatly. You can produce a medium that will uh, favor the growth of microorganisms you want to culture and inhibit the growth of other uh, growth of others. This allows you to identify the colony you want and then re-inoculate uh, re -inoculate it to produce a single pure culture. You need to control the range of nutrient available or introduce selective, uh, selective growth inhibitors, antibiotic, antifungal chemicals, so that they will reduce the prevent the growth of all uh, all microorganisms except the one you want right there are indicator media that cause this certain type of bacteria to change the color colonies that do or do not change the color can be isolated and cultured <laughs> right so there are certain indicator they will change the color when the bacteria will develop their colony we can only culture around 1% of the known species of bacteria, we do not know the right condition to grow the remaining 99% of the species of bacteria in laboratory. Right. So our capability is to grow only 1% of bacteria, known bacteria in laboratory. Rest of the 99%, what else they require? We do not know. It is particularly important to be able to isolate the disease-causing organism from those of the normal body flora, so that a disease can be diagnosed and appropriate treatment plant. The technique described above make it possible. Right. So generally, we grow the disease-causing bacteria for the experiment. A sterile, you know, nutrient medium, you know, nutrient growth, you know, liquid culture, you know, nutrient agar, we know, selective medium, we know. Inoculation, we have studied, right? Measuring the growth of bacteria. Now, how you will measure the growth of bacteria that how, like, um, by what quantity they are growing? Okay. You need it to be able to measure the number of cells present in the culture at various time interval in order to measure the changes in bacterial culture and the growth in the population. Bacteria are so small that it's impossible to do with the naked eye. And so you need to use the variety of different methods to count the bacteria either directly or indirectly. It is important to choose the most suitable method of measuring the investigating you are conducting cells count right this is the method where we can count the cells right how we will count no we cannot count like that this is one two three four five we have just so how how the coins are count, uh, counted in bank do you have any uh, any idea how the bankers uh count the coin no i don't know. no okay look Suppose that Afa take a, a, a coin of one rupee. So what currency um, it works at your country? Uh, in Kuwait, it's uh, dinar. Dinar. Okay, fine. So 
suppose that it's, it's a dinar. So there must be some coin of dinar or its currency note. No, no. Uh, the coins are fills and uh, the bills coins are, are bills, dinars. Bills, no? Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So suppose that uh, you want to, uh, you have a big bag of frills, right? And now you have to count how much frills are over there, right? So what I, what you will do? And the, they are of like one frill. Suppose that there are coin of one frill or five frill, whatever the quantity ran at your country. So uh, suppose that this is the coin of one frill. And you have a bag. And how you will count? Either you can count one by one, but that will be useless, right? I have to, what I have to do, I will take one coin and I will weight this coin, right? So suppose that one frill, coin of one frill is of 0.5 grams. Now I will put that bag on weight machine. I will count the weight of complete that bag. Now I will divide it with the help from 0.5. I will get how many, how many uh, coins are over there. Got it? Yes. Okay. That's how the banker actually counts. They never count like one, two, three, and neither they have any machine to count the coin, right? They just count with the help of weight. They weight and they divide the weight of one coin. Then they come to know how many coins are over there. Exactly they come to know. That's what banker do. So uh, this is a homeometer, right? So you can count the bacteria and single cell fungi which is cultured in Newton growth mm -hmm. directly using a microscope and a hemocytometer, right? So with the help of hemocytometer. A hemocytometer is a specialized thick microscope with, which have the rectangular mm -hmm. chamber that holds the standard volume of 0 0.1 millimeter cubic. These, these, these standard holes, right? The chamber is engraved, marked with grid lines, which is originally designed for the counting the blood cells. Right. So this is designed to count the blood cells. You dilute the sample of nutrient growth by the half with an equal volume and uh, tripen blue, a dye that stains the dead cells blue, so that you can identify the count only living cells. Right. So you have not to count the blue cells. You have to count the living cells. Then you can view the count of the cells using a microscope. Right? Each corner of the hemocytometer grid has a square divided into 16 smaller square. Right? This is the square hemocytometer. Right? And every square they have got the 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So total 16. So every square has 16 squares, the small squares. Each corner of the hemocytometer is a grid of a square that divided into 16 small squares. The number of cells of each of these four sets of 14 squares are usually counted, right? And means it is calculated. The hemocytometer is calibrated so that the number of the bacteria of the fungal cell in one uh, set of 16 square is equal to the number of the cells of cells into 10 to the power 4 per centimeter cubic, right? So first we count, right? This is the, uh, so uh, the, uh, all, all those number of the bacteria which are found in 16 squares, they will be equal to the number of cells into 10 to the power 4 centimeter square, right? Then we will, what we will do, uh, all the bacteria which comes in these 16 square, will count those bacteria, then we will multiply with the 10 to the power 4 per centimeter cubic of the growth. In this way, <coughs> you can calculate the number of microorganisms in a standard volume of growth. You can construct a, a picture of the, uh, the changing cell number by taking the measurement at a regular time interval throughout the life of bacterial colony. Got it? Got it? How we have to count? So How? you you count uh, the number of um, microorganisms in one of the 16 squares and then you multiply it with um, 10 power 4. Right. Okay. First we have to count one in one, then all, all these 16, then what we'll do, we will multiply with 10 to power 4 per centimeter cube. Okay. So he, they can ask you, what are the hemocytometer or how we count the number of bacteria in a culture, right? 
now there is one more method optical method turbidity now what is the optical method or turbidimetry an alternative way of measuring the number of the cells in a culture is by turbidimetry a specialized form of calorimetry as the number of bacterial cell in culture increases it become increasingly turbid means cloudy turbid means cloudy as the number of bacteria in cell increases it becomes increasingly turbidity cloudy so it will not be possible to count numbers right as solution become the more turbid means more messy kind of right it absorb more light so that the less light can pass through it a calorimeter measure the how much the light passes through a sample and thus how the how much the light is absorbed this indirectly indicate how many microorganisms are present right got it what is the turbimetry a specialized form of calorimetry this is a calorimetry which is a specialized type of calorimetry what it do it measure the number of bacterial cell uh, bacterial cells in a culture increase right how many number of the bacterial cell increase it become increasingly turbid right as a solution become more turbid it absorb more light right when the solution will become more turbid it will absorb more light right so the light light passes through it a calorimeter measure how much the light pass through a sample right that means how much light passes through the samples and thus shows how much the light is absorbed it also shows the how much light is absorbed more bacteria mean they will absorb more light this indirectly indicate how much microorganism are present so you can produce a calibration curve by growing the control of culturing and taking the sample at regular time interval so at regular time interval we are taking the sample and then we will come to know how many bacteria have grown more right how by the by by the counting how much the light is absorbed more bacteria means more light more bacteria means more light absorption this gives you relationship between the turbidity and the uh, ter turbidity means that is the density of indirectly that is the density of bacteria at a, a culture and the number of bacterial cell present you can use this calibration curve measure in the number of microorganism simply using the turbidity for example uh, you might want to investigate the effect of different conditions on growth and rate of microorganism yes we can uh, use the growth rate of microorganism by supply different different nutrient medium so we can measure the number density with the help of turbidity got it or not it's a little um, confusing ah uh, look it's a very vague idea which is given over here so look turbidity is a uh, you can say what is a turbidity uh, means look uh, we have a calorimeter what calorimeter says that calorimeter says if the uh, light absorption is this much then there will be 1 lakh bacteria if life absorption is this much then there will be 2 lakh bacteria right so with the help of light absorption it tells how much the light has been absorbed by the liquid with the help of light light absorption it tells you how many bacteria must be over there clear suppose yes. that you have grown the bacteria there is a growth you have put that calorimeter now it's showing that the 0.2 so 0.2 light has been absorbed in the column 0.2 light has been absorbed it means there are for example i'm saying that there are 1 lakh bacteria now after some time one hour you have again taken the measure now there is a 0.4 it means the bacteria got doubled mean 2 lakh so that's how by with the help of absorption of light you tells how many bacteria are present in the liquid got it yes that's it turbidity density and viable count right how many bacteria are there and this is the turbidity there is a light source this is the scattering of light that is measuring the turbidity 
dilution plotting now what is the dilution plotting another way of counting the microorganism in the culture technique is dilution plotting which is used to find the total viable count means how many bacteria are living bacteria are there this technique is based on the idea that each of the colony on the agar plate has grown from the single viable microorganism on the plate so if you have two bacterial colonies so if you have two bacterial colonies after culturing you can presume that there were two initial living bacteria on the plate for example if you count the 30 patches of the fungi mycelia you can say the 30 fungal cells were on the plate when it was inoculated when i have just introduced so for example there were 30 mycelium is 30 fungi however a solid mass of the microbial growth is often present after the culturing and it is not possible to identify the individual colony yes this is not possible because mycelia will uh, spread here and they are like that now how you will count because they are not indivisible or they are not separate from each other however a solid mass of micro microbial uh, microbial grow often present after the culturing and it is not possible to identify the individual colony you can solve the problem by diluting the original culture in stages until you uh, reach a point when you can when you can count the colonies you can calculate the total viable cells count for the original sample by multiplying the number of colonies by diluting the factor so what we are doing now you can calculate the total viable count of the original sample by multiplying the number of colonies by diluting every time i uh, the number increases i dilute more and more look 9 cm water then 1 cm cubic bacteria taken and again 9 cm water added then again 1 cm cubic taken again 9 cm water is filled so every time i am diluting right so number of the count of the bacteria are reducing right in the same liquid you can calculate the total viable count of the original sample by multiplying the individual colonies you can obtain mean giving the reasonability to create the number in so what we are doing now every time diluting now the stage will come look here it is very messy number of colonies are unknown then what what are we what we are doing we are diluting it we have diluted now it is still unknown now we have again diluted now we came to know look it is 263 colony over there now again diluted now we came to know 0.0028 colony now we again diluted three colony again diluted single colony now i have got this single colony of bacteria now what i am doing now i can count the how many bacteria are, are there in one colony after getting how many bacteria are in one colony then i will i will i will uh, what i will do then i will uh, multiply with this one this one look dilution so this is the over, uh, this is the dilution is given over there what i will do if there is 1000 bacteria in here then i will i will count out how many colonies should be over there then i will multiply with it and i can come to know that uh, roughly come to know that how many bacteria are over there right this is the dilution technique got it it was simple i did not understand uh suppose that uh i have uh suppose that i have a bag and in that bag there are small small packet inside the bag and every 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 uh, that um, just like Suppose that uh, um, I have a uh, that that one a uh, a bag, a big bag, and inside the bag, that bag, there are small small packet, and every packet have the number of the colon, number of the candies, right? So now, by looking the bag, you cannot tell the number of the candy. What you will do? You will pick out, you will you will divide that that bag into ten different different. I'll say, do one thing. 
divide this bag, the quantity of the packet in 10 different different, right? 10 different different small bags. Then what I will do, then I will say, you have out of these 10 bags, pick one bag, right? And again, divide it into 10 parts, right? Again, you have divided in 10 parts. Now I will say the last bag, which you have again divided in 10 parts, count the one part, how many candy are there? You have taken the one part, you, can, you say that in one part, sir, there are three packets. How many candy inside packet? Every packet have 20 candy. So how many packets in that part? You will say, sir, 60 candy. Then I will say that you have divided, multi, uh, divided single bag into 10 parts. So what do you do? You will, you will, you will, that what you will say, you will, you will uh, multiply that 60 into 10. So how many candy were in that, that, that bag? 600. 600, right. So how many candy were, uh, were in the big bag? 600 into 6,000, right. That's oh, what okay. you are doing. Got it? Yes. This is the diluting method. So what I did, I diluted that bag. I diluted that bag and every bag. So candy is a bacteria and that packet is colony, right? And that bag was growth. Got it? Yes. Okay. So this was the dilution method. Mm -hmm. Area and mass of a day. Okay. <clears throat> When you culture the fungi rather than bacteria, you can assess the growth of simple way by measuring the diameter of individual area of mycelium. You can use this method to compare the growth rate in different conditions. For example, to find the optimum temperature for growth to follow this step. Right? So when you so what is mycelium? Mycelium, oh so, let me tell you what is the mycelium. Look, you must have seen uh, a bread in your uh, kitchen and uh, it is abandoned for, uh, you went somewhere and you left a bread. And when you came back, you saw this kind of the mice, this kind of the network of uh, fungi. Have you seen it? Yeah, the green color, green and white. Right, green and white patches. So that, yeah. that and, and the, like the rotten part, it, it gets number of the, this kind of thread-like structure, right? Mm -hmm. This thread-like structure is called mycelia. Okay. Right. Now the single thread, this single thread, this single thread is called hypha. Got it? Hypha. Okay. Got it? So this network is mycelium and this is called hypha. Okay. So when you count, when you culture the fungi rather than bacteria, you can assess the growth of simple way by measuring the diameter of individual area of mycelia. You can use this method to compare the growth rate in the different condition. For example, find the optimum temperature for the growth of growth. Follow this step. Now uh, we are here counting the fungi, right? Mass of fungi. Inoculate a identical petri dishes counting the identical growth of the medium with the same number of fungal spores, right? Inoculate a petri dish. Petri dish means a dislike. This, this, this kind of the things which you, you must have seen in lab. This is called petri dish, right? This kind of yes. thing, glass thing. This is called petri dish. A petri dish at different temp uh, temperatures with the several identical dishes grow at each temperature. After a specific period time, measure the diameter of each fungal colony and calculate the mean value of diameter of each temperature uh, at each temperature right so in petri dish you have grown the fungus at different different temperature you have to count what is the diameter of this fungal colony right so what is uh, fungal spores fungal spores means suppose that this mycelia so when reproduction is done what happens in this hypha uh, you will get uh, this kind of a structure will come out and then there will be ball-like structure. Inside bowl, there will be small, small seed-like thing. These are the spore. What happens when, uh, at, at this, this is the reproduction method in fungi. When this, this, this is called sporangia. So during the reproduction time, fungi develop sporangia. At the favorable condition, these sporangia bust and spores come out. These spores uh, spread here and there. 
then they, these spore will germinate. And after the germination, they again make the hive. And then mycelia. Got it? So these are called fungal spores. Okay. And they are very small. We cannot see them. They keep on floating in air. They remain in the between the thread of our shirt and all that, right? In the cloth. That's why we need not. We should not. Uh, we should never uh, wear the cloth of someone else, right? Because these spores and bacteria they can go inside the thread. And if you if you wear the cloth of someone else, what will happen? Uh, you will get that fungal infection. Got it? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> You can use the same technique for bacteria, but uh, but the growth of the colony uh, tends to be slower and therefore less easy to measure because the microorganisms themselves are too small. Right. So this method we cannot use the this diameter method cannot be used in bacteria because the growth of the bacteria is slow because they are very small. One very effective way to discover the best array and concentration of a nutrient or the optimum pH at which the grow fungi to test the dry mass of the micro. Right? The best method to do this by using the liquid uh, growth medium. You can remove the sample of growth. You have just grown the bacteria, then uh, remove the uh, growth by evaporating it. You can remove the sample of the growth by a regular interval but separate fungi from the liquid and centrifugation of R or the filtration. Then you will dry the uh, material through until you record uh, that there is no more or less moss for extract. Uh, extract in an oven overnight and around 100 degrees centigrade. This gives you the measure the dry mass of biological material in certain volume of the culture medium. An increase or decrease dry mass gives you indication that increase or decrease of the mycelium mass, the conditions which produce the greatest dry mass of the fungus is optimum condition for the growth. Right. What you do? You <coughs> take a broth, you grow the fungi and multiply the fungi. When the number of the fungi, when the mass of the fungi increases, after that, what you do? You remove the growth. And then what you do, then you filter with the help of filter, you remove the growth. And uh, after getting the that mass of the fungi, what you what what you can do, you can put that mass in oven and dry it. Then you can measure it by with the help of dry mat uh, measurement of the dry weight. You can say you can calculate uh, uh, conclude that what are the optimal condition when the bacteria grow uh, sorry fungi grow at it, its best, right? This was the area and mass of fungi method. Okay. Not. Yes, Safa. Hello. Hello, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it or so not? So you uh, grow a uh, fungi in liquid growth medium, and then you. Remove samples of growth at regular intervals and separate fungi from the liquid. Right. Okay. Then. Then you dry it. Right. Then How? you dehydrate uh, it in the and oven or what? Right. Okay. Then you measure. Okay. And you measure it in different different conditions. You grow the bacteria in different different conditions, and. In whichever the case, you get the maximum amount. It uh, uh, then you come to know that this is the <coughs> best suitable condition for the growth of the fungi. Okay. Immunocytometer, turbidimetry, turbid, dilution plating, total viable cells count, we did all, all things. 
area and mass of hydrogen. We did it. It's very small. Uh, what we have to do, we have to enlarge it. Wait. First, I enlarge it. Yes. Most of infections are communicable. This means that the infection is capable of spreading from one person to another. another. Disease can spread in many different ways. Sometimes part of normal bacterial flora or the body will change. And case of disease, the response to change in the body and movement, but often the new microorganism in, enter into body and cause, causes a problem. Method of spread. How does the disease spread? So, what is a bacterial flora? Flo flora means we, we use the term uh, uh, for plant basically. Flora means plant and bacteria. Fauna means animals. Got it? So, when I say plant flora, so when I say flora of your garden, means all the plant in your garden, right? When I say flora of bacteria means all the bacteria present in your body. Got it? Yes. Method of spread. For many diseases, uh, for any disease to spread, the pathogen need to enter in the body. I said we used to use the term inoculation. So when Intentionally, we are growing the bacteria, we call it inoculating. When bacteria unintentionally comes in our body, we call it invasion, right? Or infection, right? For any disease to spread, the pathogen needs to enter in the body of new host. This can happen for a number of different ways. The body opening provides the relative easy access, for example, are the eyes, nose, mouth, ear, anus, urinogenital opening. The alternative microorganism to enter directly into the blood through the skin. This is more difficult for more direct route of the pathogen are transmitted into variety of ways. You know, our body skin is like a, 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 a tough wall. No bacteria or fungi can penetrate inside. So, the bacteria or fungi enter through are these openings where whatever the openings are over there. Still, by the way, we have some protection over there, right? And they cannot easily enter. If the bacteria enter inside saliva, there is a lysozyme that kills the bacteria. If it enter inside the nose, there is a mucus, mucus trap it and lysozyme kills it. In bacteria, what happened? Tears, they are protective, right? In uh, ear, there are the wax, wax, uh, so that is also protective. So, uh, this is not, it is not easy. But sometimes what happens, uh, some, uh, a person fell down in the ground, got injured, is skin injured, and the blood is oozing out. Then the bacteria come, can, because the wall is broken now. Right. What are the vectors? Vectors are those which bring the uh, bacteria from one place to another. How? You have a very hygienic food at your home, right? You made a very good hygienic food at your home. Now, a, a, a fly which was sitting in that uh, garbage and that in that garbage, it was sitting on the garbage and the garbage, there was 
a bacteria, a pathogenic bacteria of cholera, Vibrio cholerae. It have taken generally it, it that's what happened. I tell you. So it have taken the Vibrio cholerae bacteria in its feet. Now it is flying high and high. It reached to your floor. It reached used. It, it reached inside your kitchen. It reached in in your plate. It sat on the plate and flew away. What will happen now? It have transferred that cholera bacteria. And if you will eat the food, you will get the cholera. Right? That's how the vector. So fly was the vector. Which is transporting microorganisms from one place to another. Got it? What are the vectors? Yes. Okay. Mosquito are vectors. Right. Inhalation. When? When you cough, you sneeze, talk, millions of the droplets are expelled from your respiratory tract. If you have an infection, the respiratory system, those droplets contain the pathogen. Suppose that somebody has viral fever and he or she is sneezing. When he sneezes out, the number of the droplet is spread in the air. What will happen? The students sitting in classroom in vicinity, they will inhale that those droplet and they will get the infection. That's how the viral fever is spread. You must have seen that. You must have realized that thing in your classroom. Yes? Have you? Yes. So I think these schools must be offline now. In your yeah. city. So no, I don't go to school anymore. I finished it. You finished them? You don't go to school? Yeah. Now? No, I'm just, uh, I finished school and then I applied to a university and they said I have to do A-levels. So if you want to do A-levels, you can do it at school or you can do private. So I decided to do it private. Okay. Okay. So you want to do the graduation, right? I finished school graduation this year in March. You finished the graduation this year? Then yeah. you are planning for Actually, I finished school uh, in 2020. And right. our graduation was delayed. Okay. So, so you just placed this year. Fine. So now why you are uh, studying these, these, these 11, 12 topics? A-levels a because um, univers some universities require them. Some don't. And the ones that I want to join, they want me to finish uh, biology A levels. So they, uh, will they take any entrance test and all that? Yeah, they will take one. Okay, so Even that's why you're this. preparing for that. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought you you have to give the board exam. Oh, this is a board exam. A level is a board exam. A level is a board exam. Okay, yeah. I thought you have to give the twelfth class board exam. That was I. Yeah, yeah but most of the universities, they don't um, require A-levels, but some of them do, and I have to give these board exams. And when I apply to the university, I have to give entrance exams, and that's how I will get into the university. It's not simple. So uh, what was the subject in your graduation? Uh, so, uh, science subjects, so chemistry, physics, biology, um, computer, okay. uh, maths, Right. And what about the PG? What what you are going to take in PG? There must be few subjects in PG, post-graduation. Uh, post-graduate? Yeah. Uh, like uh, in university? Yeah, in university. What you will take? Yeah, uh, either nutrition or physiotherapy or biotechnology. I'm not sure which one is the best for me. So what do you want to do in your life here? Like, what is the, like your future goal? What exactly you want to become? I want to work at a hospital. You want to? As any doctor, I don't care. Okay. But, uh, nutrition and physiotherapy, um, interest, I have an interest in these two. Okay, that's great. That's great. And you know, uh, uh, nutrition, uh, like in, uh, the scope of nutritionist, it was not there in society in a few years back. But now it's increasing. It, it was very much developed uh, kind of the phenomena and very much developed kind of the custom in uh, 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 like uh, European countries and uh, uh, American countries, right? So like South American and uh, not South American, actually North American country, basically the North American countries and European countries, because the people are much more aware about this, their health. In Asian peoples, they are hardly care. They, they hardly take care of their. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> only the rich, rich one. <laughs> yeah. Only rich one uh, take care of that. Right. But uh, now I've, um, I've seen many people are taking care of your health now. Exactly. 
but you know still uh, and the good thing is that uh, those people who are taking care of who which are effluent because you know in asian country the people are running behind the bread only mm-hmm. they, they are just worried about the bread they are not worried yeah, about yeah. what kind of the nutrition they are taking right yeah so yeah. so but but now the people are very aware in big city right so the, the yeah. scope of nutritionist is increasing day by day and uh, um this this uh, i think i i what 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 i expect that uh, this job have a more future more employability in comparison to biotechnology and other things because biotechnology they are very specific they are it have a, still it have very narrow spectrum right now okay so that's good if you are t- if you are choosing this uh, this one a nutritionist as a nutritionist if you uh, want to become you want to make career in nutrition then that is the best thing okay right so vector then then inhalation that 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 we have discussed ingestion uh, for ingestion suppose that uh, uh, you went to a sweet shop and this, that sweet have been uh, sweet is put for uh, a weeks right and they have um, given that 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 contaminated sweet or old sweet to you or if you visiting a hotel particular hotel and uh, they have they have kept kept some food in freeze for for uh, like long a long period and uh, if you will take that food and, and the bacteria develop over there if you will take that food you will get the bacteria right mm-hmm. so that how bacteria goes inside in our body with the help in, in, in look salmonella poisoning typhoid if you take in the bad food the salmonella typhi is a bacteria which will go inside and that will cause the typhoid and that infect our uh, 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 this one liver fomites now what are the fomites fomites are inanimate object they carry the pathogen from one host to another host right so like the like uh, like same way the mosquito do the same way the vector do hospital towels and bedding can be a risk right these are called fomites right even using this someone else uh, uh, cosmetic that is also that may also cause infection for example include staphylococcus bacteria right it is responsible for syphilis right and what's that it's a species of bacteria Okay. right so they uh, they can spread with the help of uh, this one one more thing which i want to tell you for example you must have a, take a very simple example uh, you must have listened about the hepatitis b yeah suppose that a person is infected with hepatitis b he or she have uh, like use he have she uh, or uh, taken this brush toothbrush right taken uh, that that uh, paste tube and put in brussels right now what happened that person who is using that tube it's not putting in mouth but but it's it's putting on the this one um uh, the, the, this brush right so bacteria was already present in the brush right now the bacteria transferred from brush to uh, that's that uh, that that uh, mouth of that tube right now the another healthy person have taken that same tube and put Uh, that tube in uh, uh, this one uh, brush so now bacteria transfer from that toothpaste to that brush and again then they, this healthy person will brush teeth the bacteria transfer that that's how the infection takes place right so a few minute back i was telling you that don't uh, wear someone else cloth right don't share the cloth right that is the reason behind it because these uh, this is this is called fomites right got it yes okay direct contact just shaking the hand with the person like suppose that a person got uh, a fever or tb tb someone have tb now um, he or she is coughing put 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 hanky and uh, that uh, that uh, hand in mouth now what will happen after sneezing the bacteria transfer over here someone someone have shaken the hand now the bacteria transfer from one hand to another hand now from the hand to mouth that's how the infection takes place when you travel in the metro 
thousands of people, lakhs of the people travel in the metro. They sneeze, the bacteria transfer in their hand. What they do? They, 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 they grab the handle, bacteria transfer in handle. That's how the <coughs> bacteria reaches from one person to another person with the help of direct contact. Right? Yes. Okay. yes. Inoculation. A pathogen can be inoculated into body directly through break of skin. I told you somebody fell down somewhere and now that the ground was infected, a tetanus bacteria was present over there. He or she will get the tetanus. That's how the bacteria is inoculated in body by the breakdown of the skin, right? Barriers to entry. The body does not make easy for pathogen to enter in the person. They have to cross several natural barriers before the infection can occur, right? The number of the barriers are there. I have already told you that uh, tears have the lysozyme. Bacteria have the acidic pH value, which is not, sorry, uh, skin have the acidic pH value that is not good for the growth of the bacteria, right? So come to the uh, number of the defenses or body defenses which are present in our body. Before going into that topic, I want to tell you how many defenses are there. Are there basically three lines of the defenses which are present in our body? If any bacteria try to infect me, my skin is a bomb. Like my body skin is first line of defense. They cannot cross to skin. They can try to go through with my mouth. Saliva have um, uh, lysozyme. It will kill that. Mucus is present. Nose, tears. They have. Um, uh, lysozyme and this one uh, uh, ears inside the ear wax have the antipathogenic bacteria cannot grow in our skin because of the sweating right so there are number this was the first line of it for example if someone have swallowed some uh, some infected or pathogenic kind of the food or something so bacteria gone inside Still, there are number of the barriers inside the stomach. There is HCL. It will kill that, right? Suppose that some person fell down. Now the bacteria have entered in the bloodstream, right? Now bacteria entered in the bloodstream. What will happen? Now it will start the infection. When it will start the infection, there are under different mechanism, right? The person will get the fever. What fever do? Fever is a not bad thing. Fever is a good thing. Fever increases the body temperature. When body temperature increases, what happens? The deficiency of iron takes place in blood. Due to deficiency of the blood, bacteria cannot multiply. So fever try to stop by increasing the body temperature. Fever try to stop the multiplication of that. Still bacteria have infected the body and multiplied. Now the third line of defenses are WBCs. WBC. WBC will start multiplying, their number will increase. They will try and they will fight with the bacteria, they will eat the bacteria and they will die themselves. Right. That's how the fight will take place, and bacteria will be killed with the help of that third line of defense. There are these are the line of defense in our body. Got it? Yes. Okay. Now you will uh, get easily. Epithelial defenses do you know what are the epithelium yes what are those on their cells epithelial cells yes so what they are like where they are found what is their function give me some uh, basic skin. okay and anywhere else Okay. Any outer or internal covering of body is made up of epithelium. Okay. Inside mouth, right? That is inner covering, epithelium. Intestine, outer covering of intestine, inner covering of intestine. It is made up of epithelium. Got it? Okay. So, any outer or inner covering of body or organ is made up of epithelium. And this is a protective layer. Clear? Yes. So, Afaf, what is temperature at your country right now? Right now? Um, well, what should be? Now, these days? It's 20. Well, Point? In summer, it's 50 to 60. 
Okay, in summer it's fifty to sixty. Now this is point eight. Right now it's twenty. Ah, it's too cold out there. Is that okay. cold? <laughs> yeah. <Is> that cold? <laughs> it's not too cold over here. Right now it should be around twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, twenty twenty-two. Winters are approaching. Mountainous area there. There is a snow, a snowfall, and all that started. But now here in Delhi and not, not, not near past. It's something around twenty. Not that much cold. So, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, skin. So, uh, skin or inner side of the part that is called epithelium, right? Your skin is impenetrable. We have already talked about that layer. Uh, strengthened by keratin. What is keratin? Apa? A fibrous protein. Fiber protein? Fibrous protein. Okay. Can you give me the example? Hair and nails are made of keratin. Exactly, exactly. And you know, whenever you like put the nail like this on the skin, you will say you will you'll see this this white kind of the light form. Irrespective of whatever they like how much clean it is, but you'll get a white kind of the line, right? So this outer layer is basically dead in every person. Outer layer is dead, and that is made up of keratin, right? And obviously, well said that you said that the hairs and nails they are made up of keratin. So it's a tough protein, right? Hard protein, but dead. Yeah. A fibrous structural protein to remind yourself. Of what fibrous protein is. It forms a physical barrier between the many path pathogens in environment and blood rich tissues beneath the skin and oily substances produced by skin called sebum. Right. So, sebum is actually the wax which is produced in our ear that we call sebum. And oil glands are present in our face or our skin, so they produce all that is called sebum. Contain a chemical that inhibit the growth of microorganism. So that is the chemical I already told you. Uh, told you that was the uh, there is an enzyme that is called lysozyme. So lysozyme is present in all these things. So that kills the bacteria and inhibit the growth of bacteria. That form the second layer of skin defenses, <laughs> right? Sebum does not harm natural skin flora. Right? They do not harm their own flora, which are adapted for survival on your skin surface and also play a role in preventing the disease. Your, your natural skin flora compete successfully for a position on the skin and also some cases. Produce substances that inhibit the growth of other microbes. In fact, washing too often and using the antibacterial soaps can reduce your resistance to disease by destroying the natural pH balance of your surface floor. Got it? Yes. So, like, if we use too many anterior, uh, antibacterial soaps, it's harmful? Right. That is, uh, that was, that, you know, uh, have you uh, seen this thing that, uh, the number of the people died in corona due to coronavirus in Italy and Germany was the highest. In Italy, it was highest. The Italian Prime Minister was crying in front of the camera. That, and the statement was, we did everything what we could, but now it is up to the God. Right? That was, you know, why, why it happened? Comparatively, in Asian Asian uh, population, basically in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and all. So in these areas, the death rate was very very limited uh -huh. because Italian people they are the most hygienic people in the world. Oh. So when when you becomes more hygienic, more and more hygienic, then resistance of your body decreases. Okay. But it doesn't mean that every person, that the person should not bath or should not, should be unhygienic, right? It is not like that. But to become more hygienic, more sophisticated, that reduces your body capability and your body resistance, right? Because nature have made us like that, right? So that's what it is mentioned over here, that if you are using more and more antibiotic, more and more uh, 
uh, this this medical kind of the thing what will happen they will kill their own bacteria right it means you are harming yourself right you are because you are killing killing the good bacteria what it yes you know you must have seen that a person uh, got fever and the doctor given the high, heavy doses of antibiotic what happened the person starts lose motion oh. it happens because along with the yeah. bad bacteria that antibiotic kill the bad bacteria but it also kill the good good bacteria okay uh, so high dose antibiotics are very bad for our health <clears throat> so uh, your natural skin flora right that will ph balance right the pharynx and the large intestine have protective uh, covering of similar to the skin there is a slime right large intestine have a slimy covering that is also pro that also protect us from bacteria so sir uh, people that have a leaky gut they don't have this uh, protective covering which one uh, there are people that have gut issues like leaky gut they don't have this protecting covering exactly exactly they don't have this actually you know they they have the protective covering but along with the protective covering there is a bacteria good bacteria that is called e coli escherichia coli right what actually okay. these bacteria they help in the digestion right and they also help in the production of vitamin d right and they are responsible for production of some vitamins like like vitamin d i told you vitamin d and vitamin b12 thylacobalamin and they also help in digestion of the food right so when these they the that layer uh, uh, is not over there and these bacteria good bacteria are not over there they will have their uh, like running a stomach and all that got it mm -hmm. so mechanism or what is that is there something missing over there in this paragraph of of no 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 uh, this is actually half of the part of the next page i forgot to pop it yeah this page this page yeah yes 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 so now let me yes <clears throat> yes this part is also missing. so that's why i was thinking there is some disconnect mm -hmm. so the surface of internal tubes and duct found in areas such as your nose respiratory system gut urinary and reproductive tract are more vulnerable to invasion of pathogen than the skin on outside of your body this is because these internal surface are very thin and not strengthened with the keratin however these epithelial layer also produce defensive secretion uh, many produce mucus a sticky substances that trap the microorganisms mucus contain lysozyme i was telling you right mucus contain lysozyme saliva contain lysozyme the sebum gland they contain the lysozyme right uh the enzyme which is capable of destroying the microbial cell wall these enzyme are particularly effective against the gram positive bacteria they destroy the cross linkages in the peptidoglycan when means the cell wall we have already understood peptidoglycan in the bacterial cell lysozyme are also present in the tears secretions which keep your eyes moist and protect them entry of the pathogen they they are the part of non specific defense of the body against the disease the mucus produced in respiratory system constantly move toward the outside of the body and lining of the urinary is constantly washed with the urine cilia also move much in reproductive tract for example they move mucus uh, they move mucus along with the fallopian tube leading to the ovaries to the uterus phagocytic white blood cells which can engulf and digest the pathogen are also present in epithelial surface okay so when uh, no yes mechanism are so successful that the respiratory reproductive and urinary system usually have no bacteria 
uh, in them except for the areas nearest to the outside environment however if the microorganism uh, are present in the sufficient number they may cross these defense um, the defenses and reaches the areas where the cells are vulnerable to the infection for example here the cold and viral flu that can enter in the body through this path got it that's how yes, we okay. will start body clear so i think we should start next in next class we'll do that the next topic the same thing is entering the gut so you have to tell me we have to start from here note it down somewhere your notebook okay we'll start from here right till the time revise it whatever we have done today right and in case if you have uh, uh, any confusion in today's class and uh, today's topic you can ask right now okay Should I leave the class now, sir?